here are my vegetable garden plans for 2020. I thought I would try to show you guys a little bit about um, how I'm planning it out, why I'm choosing to put things in certain areas, and uh, maybe talk a little bit about choosing plants based on um, what I know about our growing area. So let's get started. Here we go. This is um, a not to scale drawing of our property. We've got an acre. Um, there are several gardens already here when we moved in. Some of them have been converted into veggie areas, but some of them do remain flower gardens just because it's easier that way. Um, so, let's see if I can do this. This is our house, this is the driveway. Um, over here we've got a gravel patio. There's some stairs here that lead down to the patio. Previously this was an above ground swimming pool and we have since um, turned it into a patio. Up here is a garden, a raised flower garden surrounded by rocks. There's a cedar tree here and a hedge of cedars here. This indicates the property line all the way around. So on the other side of our driveway, we have an existing shed with a couple trees here, um, some fruit trees in this general area. I've got a planter here, which used to be um, a water container for livestock. It's one of those big metal ones. I've painted that and um, just use it as a planter. This is our 200 square foot veggie garden. We put this in in 2013. It's not a raised bed, um, but we did put lumber around to make a frame. This is not what it looks like at present. It's just a big rectangle. And we purchased um, fill to put in to raise it up a bit. So it is sort of raised, but not quite. Around the patio are some big L-shaped planters that my husband and his father built a few years ago. Previously I used them for just various flowers and then last year I decided to do more vegetables in them. They did really well there so I plan to do that again. Um, oh and I should mention there's a hedge of alternating ash trees and lilacs along that property line. Over here is um, a garden bed I put in a few years ago, originally just to fill some space. I had flowers there and last year I decided to do snow peas as well as some herbs. I did have some squash growing there, just along here, but they got damaged before they could mature, so they were not edible. This area is another garden um, that has our air conditioner next to it, and then I've got a vintage concrete sink here that I use as a planter. This is how you get into our house through the back door, so there's nothing there. I do have another garden here but it's just for irises, so I don't put anything, any vegetables there. Where am I? This is our chicken coop and chicken run. I do have some hostas along, oops, along here, along the fence line, just to create some shade for the chickens. Um, I don't wanna plant anything edible there for humans to eat because the chickens will just eat it up. They'll destroy it. I am going to plant some sunflowers though. I think that'll be nice. We did have raspberries growing here on the back side of our chicken coop, but they ended up taking over um, and I didn't like it there. So I moved them. I transplanted some last year up here and I'll continue to do so this year. So that's pretty much what our property looks like. Um, if you are curious, north is this way. 
south is this way, that way is east, and then west. All right, let me try to explain a little bit about what is going where. So I did the raspberries up across the front because there's a lot of space between our cedar hedge here and the property boundary. And I thought raspberries would do well up there because it's uh, just a lot of space for them to grow and just kind of fill in. On this side by the front shed, I have um, some echinacea flowers here, also called cone flower. A friend of mine dug some up for me a few years ago and they only recently started blooming very well. You can use echinacea um, when it's dried. You can use the flower parts and the leaves to make tea. It's good for immune building. Uh, my husband would always drink echinacea tea from the store. And then this past year, I decided to really harvest a lot of the plant to make tea. And he said it has a really nice flavor. Plus the flowers are just pretty. They're nice and pink. In this planter, last year I did um, scarlet runner beans, which are quite large. The bean pods themselves are large and the bean inside is a nice hot pink color. Um, they need some type of trellis or ladder or something. So I had just used a piece of old um, fencing, but it wasn't strong enough and the plant kept toppling. So instead I'm going to be doing, as you can see from my list, I'm going to be planting parsley, spinach, lettuce, and cabbage. I thought I had kale, but I did not have any seeds left, so I crossed that out. I think those plants will do well here because it's fairly protected from the wind. Um, we do get a lot of wind on our property, so I'm hoping that because it's sheltered by the shed, it should be okay. I know that some plants like these do all right in shade, so I'm hoping that this shaded area will be a good environment for them. In our veggie garden, um, as I said, it was previously one big rectangle, but we've decided to break that up into, I think, four smaller beds. We haven't figured it out yet. This is just a rough sketch, but the plan is to do four smaller beds that um, will reuse the the wood around the frame to make the smaller beds and then we'll have sort of a cross shaped path in the middle which will have mulch on it to keep the weeds down. Our reasoning for wanting to do the smaller beds this year is because um, the garden, the veggie garden is my chore to do to weed it and everything and it takes a lot of effort because we have terrible weeds out where we live. It's um, the biggest one is called bindweed and it's got a huge root system. It can stretch for so long, so many feet. Um, early tribes used to actually use bindweed roots as rope. So that gives you an idea of how strong this root system is. So needless to say, I do not enjoy weed. So we're hoping that by having four smaller beds that will reduce the amount of weeds we get and um, the overall amount of time I have to spend weeding. So we're planning to do heirloom tomatoes in one of the planters, or in one of the, the plots. Um, I think I'll do another one just of mixed herbs because we want a lot of bees to be pollinating in the area and um, the herbs should flower sooner than the rest of the plants. So hopefully that will encourage um, pollinating all around that area. Just in case anyone's curious, we do not have honeybees um, of our own. We just have the, the wild bees. We would like to have some beehives, but I have a severe allergy to stings. So that's not really a risk we want to take at this point. Um, maybe in the future, if we are able to buy more property, we would maybe set up some hives far away from the house and the general areas that I am and then David can just be in charge of dealing with the bees. But for now, no bees for us except what are already here. Moving along, I'm planning on doing carrots and parsnips in another bed. I might do some potatoes too. Um, I'm undecided if I'll do potatoes in planters on the deck or if I'll just put them straight in the ground. 
I'd like to do another plot with beets. I'm not really a fan of beets, but uh, David likes them and we've got family members that love pickled beets, so I always make some to give away. And I'm curious to maybe learn some new recipes for beets. Maybe I'll enjoy them if I eat them differently. All right, so around this patio, as I said, this is a gravel patio. We're planning to put stone here, but that's not relevant to the vegetables that will be planted. There's a set of stairs here and uh, we've got a deck. This is not to scale, obviously. Um, we've got a deck that's at the back of the house. So this should really be <laughs> over here in relation to the property, but that doesn't matter for this drawing, I mean. Um, so we've got a deck. We usually do tomatoes across the stairs here and on the deck, but I'm finding that they're not, they didn't do very well last year. They did a lot better when I planted some random tomatoes in the planters. So I decided not to do any on the deck this year. Um, see if that makes any difference. They always do well when we plant them in the garden. So hopefully they'll continue to do well there with the new garden set up. In these planters instead, I plan to do the Scarlet Runner beans along here because we have a fairly high um, lattice frame and I've done them there before and they did really well. I'm also going to be doing some probably hot peppers in here and bell peppers here because the plants don't get very tall so they can fill the space between the soil and where the runner beans start. I'll plan to put some dill in the planters as well. They're a really good uh, pollinator plant. And in this part of the L-shaped planter, I'm going to just do pickling cucumber. And this side, I'll do English cucumber. Um, I made pickles for the last time, or for the first time, sorry, last year. So the cucumber plants I had last year, I don't think they were meant for pickling. It was, they were different varieties and I didn't end up saving the tags, but they grew a lot bigger than pickle size. They were somewhere between like an English cucumber and a field cucumber, but they looked more like field cucumbers. They were okay for pickles, but I decided this year to buy some pickling cucumber seeds um, and plant those. I can't remember yet if I already bought English cucumber seeds. I think I did. Um, if not, I'll just save some seeds from the cucumber we have in the fridge from the grocery store. So here there's also the same um, lattice framework that is in this area. So that's why I decided to do the cucumbers here because they do need some climbing space. In this area, we have um, a retaining wall and this is just the grass here, but I've been dumping soil here for the last several years in hopes of making some type of garden. As I said, this used to be an above ground pool. Um, and the space actually came out quite a bit more than what we currently have. So the soil all around here was just terrible. It was rocky and dry and just not good for growing. So anytime I had spare soil, I would just dump it up here in hopes of building it up and planting something. Um, I do plan to put some wildflowers here just because they're pretty and nice pollinators, but I decided to do pumpkin across here because I think that will do well um, because it's got lots of sun and they can really sprawl out and fill up that space. So hopefully that works. On to the other side. So as I said, I did snow peas here last year and they did really well. David made me some um, A-shaped frames out of spare lumber. So I leaned those up against the house here and the snow peas just climbed up them. This was the biggest snow pea yield I've ever had and I've been growing snow peas since 2013. Um, so they did really well here and I plan, oops, I plan to put them there again, hoping they'll do just as well. I'm also gonna throw in some yellow pole beans to the mix, see how those do. On the ground, I have some thyme bushes, creeping thyme. 
that I've had going since 2013. They used to be in a planter over here, but I took that planter out because it was crumbling since it was a concrete sink from many, many decades ago. Um, but the thyme's been doing very well here. It's a really good plant for pollinators because it has pretty little purpley flowers. Across the ground, I'm also going to be doing some acorn squash. So my creeping thyme plants, they will spread out um, across the ground, hence creeping thyme. But I've got them in uh, kind of like a cage, like a tomato cage, but not as angular, I guess. I've got them in there in the cages so they're not touching the soil completely. So I think the acorn squash will be able to grow along the ground here since they're um, a stretching plant. I can't think of the word. A sprawling plant, that's the word. So I'll do acorn squash there. In this corner, I'm just going to do sunflowers because I think they're pretty. I have a calendula plant that I'm going to be putting there again. Calendula can be... Uh, used for different things, but so far all I've used it for is drying the leaves to make tea. Uh, but David likes to drink it. He likes to mix the calendula and the echinacea leaves um, together to make a nice, unique tea. I think that's everything. This isn't the most flattering angle, but I'm just gonna go with it because I've already got the iPad set up in the dining room where I was filming um, my notes here. So I don't call myself an expert with gardening. Um, a lot of people seem to think that I know exactly what I'm talking about, but I don't. Um, a lot of it has just been trial and error, a lot of mistakes, a lot of failures, um, some successes, but I do have a few tips that I can share if you are wanting to start um, a vegetable garden. So first I would say know the soil that you have. There's all different types of soil. Um, depending on the type of soil, you can grow different things. Maybe things won't grow very well in your soil. Um, we have very dry, rocky soil. It's I don't know why it's so bad, but it is. So we can't just, you know, dig out the sod and put in seeds because they won't grow. The soil's not nutritious enough. So what we have to do is, um, if we want to plant anything in the ground, we have to purchase uh, fortified soil. We bought triple mix before and it's got um, different nutrients mixed into it, ready to go. And that's what we've been using um, in all of our gardens. We do also incorporate um, the waste from the chicken coop. It's just mulch with their droppings in it. Um, sometimes we have hay instead of the mulch, but we just till that into our gardens and it's equivalent to buying bags of manure at the store. So once you know what type of soil you have, I suggest you figure out what growing zone you're in. I don't have an exact resource for that, but you can just Google growing zone for whatever province or state you are in. And if you're in another country, I'm sure they have that information online as well. Once you know the growing zone, you can figure out um, what types of plants do well in your area, as well as when you should be planting outside. Once you figure out your growing zone and the type of soil you have, um, then you can figure out where you want to put your gardens. If you don't know what soil you have, you can always um, just kind of bring in a bag to a garden center and ask them for help identifying it. I realize now that might not really be possible with the current pandemic situation, but there's lots of resources for identifying soil types online. So you can have a Google search at that, figure out which closely resembles the soil that you have on your property. Once you know where you want to put gardens, you can figure out what types of plants you would like. Alternatively, you can figure out what plants you want first and then decide where to put them. Some plants do better in shade. Some plants prefer full sun. Some like a really moist, nutrient-rich soil. Others can grow pretty much anywhere. Um, our raspberries, for example, are called ever-bearing raspberries. 
they were growing behind our shed. Now they grow in our ditch and they're doing just fine in both places. They were previously growing at my in-law's house in a suburban lot. So plants like that, they'll do fine most anywhere. Um, other plants do require more babying and a more rich soil. So if you know what plants you want, you can figure out where to put them based on what they need. But what we ended up doing is just saying, here's where we're going to be putting things. What can we plant there? Once you know what you want to plant and where, you can start sowing your seeds indoors. Depending on your growing zone and your overall climate, you might be able to just start putting things in the ground now. I'm filming this video the beginning of April. Um, we've started our seeds indoors because it's recommended for where we live, you can start planting outside in the third week of May. Now, I used to do that, but we would get really late frosts and kill all of our small plants. So now I wait until at least the first week of June, maybe the second week of June, to put my seedlings from indoors into the garden outdoors. When you're starting your seeds indoors, you don't need a lot of fancy equipment or tools or anything like that. We just have some cheap plastic for sale pots that you get from um, the garden centers if you buy like little small seedlings but you can use any type of pot. Um, I've heard of people using egg cartons or even like plastic disposable cups, whatever you have. Make sure that it has drainage holes though um, and that you put the pots in something to catch the water. We have some rectangular plastic trays that we purchased at a garden center a few years ago. Um, they are kind of just like a pan and we put our perforated pots into that pan so that when we water them, water doesn't get all over the place. We have a spare bedroom that we set up a little table in and grow our plants there. Um, indoors, but you can just put them in any place that's going to be getting good sun. I wouldn't recommend putting them right up against a window if you have a colder climate because the nights are still getting cold where we live and um, the cold weather might not make a nice environment for the plants, for the seeds to germinate into the plants. But um, as I said, you don't need a big fancy setup. You can just put them anywhere in a sunny spot. Follow the directions on your seed packet for planting depth and even spacing, um, when to even start growing them indoors. All that information should be on your seed packets, and if you're not planting from a seed packet, you can just do a quick Google search. Um, things like beans and peas are going to germinate a lot faster and the plants will grow very quickly. So I don't suggest starting those indoors until maybe a couple weeks before you plan to put them outside because the plants will grow very fast and get very spindly and they can break um, easily. So any instructions on your seed packets regarding watering, amount of sun needed, that kind of thing. I water my plants, um, or my seedlings, sorry, every few days when the soil just starts to feel dry on the top. You don't want to overwater it because then you can get mold and you'll ruin your seeds as well as your soil. But um, yeah, it's pretty easy to start the seeds indoors and keep them alive, I guess, if you've got the right environment for that. Planting a garden and even starting a garden can feel like a lot of work and it can be work if you are starting right from scratch, depending on the type of garden you want to do. Um, but it's really fun and I find it rewarding and uh, we enjoy it. If you're curious to see more of our garden spaces in person, not just on a drawing, please let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to give you a garden tour maybe before everything starts growing and then partway through the summer when we've got some life in the gardens. Either way, let me know. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, as I said, I'm not an expert in gardening, so please don't take what I'm saying as gospel truth, the only way to do it. Do your own research. Um, I hope to just share a little bit about what I've learned from creating gardens from scratch and growing my own food. Um, but 
Again, do your own research, figure out what's going to work best for you and your family in the environment that you have. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day.